Okay, let's get this uh, show on the road. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders. Great to uh, have you here. Most of you present are uh, already coaching, coaching room uh, members. It's always interesting, you know, to see the names that I get here, Peter and Paul and uh, Robert and Jim and and uh, always the up and coming traders and uh, Malcolm and and isn't it interesting? We've got a couple of uh, traders here that are on that I know are earning one to two, three hundred thousand a year, and it's good to uh, have you here. Ah, very good. Uh, you, you need to be a sponge. <laughs> get on your mic. Excellent. So as I mentioned, uh, just a couple of quick things as we do get underway. Um, what's really interesting in preparing for uh, this session, uh, I just realized that we'll be running an hour, an hour and a half with this session, but seriously, we could easily spend a week on the materials. And as you're at to see, I've got a ton of handouts, many as coaching members you've seen before, but I want to put some emphasis on various things. And, and once again, traders, just remember, just that one ID you pick up may make a difference. And that's why, for example, Mike, it's great to see you here and Mark and some of the others because I know what your goals are and where you're heading and you're virtually guaranteeing yourself success because what actually happens is the more you are that sponge and you keep taking it in, you start to develop the beliefs. And that's what makes the massive difference between someone that's a losing trader and a winning trader. It's really that rock solid foundation that yes, I can do this and yes, I'm going to do this. So developing the mindset is what this is really about. So first of all, let me put up the disclaimer, there is a risk in trading. Uh, of course, um, make sure that you're not trading with the rent money. If you're watching a recording, please feel free to pause the recording. If you're watching one of my videos for the first time or maybe you're not one of my members or a coaching member, please visit my website and feel free to put in a request for one of my training manuals. So I've got uh, a general training manual as well as my book, The Truth About Day Trading. So please click on the link below and you'll be able, and my staff will actually send them out for you. Even better still, uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel will you be kept up to date with any of the latest videos? And uh, I haven't produced the video for a while and my staff are on my back. Come on, do more, do more. Because uh, I do so much coaching, I get so busy nowadays. But uh, bottom line is this trade is for $197, you get the world's best strategies. Um, uh, there's literally hundreds of videos, hundreds of handouts and eBooks, etc. cetera. Uh, go and visit my website. Um, feel free to drop me a, an email directly, become a member and you'll see for yourself. Well, end of advertisement. So let's get into it. So let's start with this. And as I said, we'll probably go for about 90 minutes. So, so if some of this you've heard before, just sit back and let it seep in again. But as Robin Sharma says here, to achieve the impossible, you need to first develop the mindset that it's probable. Please don't allow the current limits of your life to define your future reality. You deserve so much better and the world deserves your best. Meaning so many of us traders are suffering from stinking thinking. We need that regular checkup from the neck up and particularly when it comes to trading. So many traders have what we call a virus of the mind, that is friends and family and past experiences implant, have basically implanted these viruses and they tend to, what's the purpose of a virus? It's to multiply, it's to take over. And that's where it can really hold us back from our belief that we can do this. Because if your belief system is where, look, I really don't think I can do this, this is too damn hard. Well, of course, you're probably right. You're not going to get there. It's so important we work on the head stuff. Now, you've heard me say this before, that trading is really 90% head stuff. Um, it's 5% money management, 5% the strategy. It's, so it's really important that we consistently and constantly work upon ourselves. Now, if you're watching this video for the first time or watching one of my videos, one thing I must really get across to you is we've discovered now, and there's a great book called Mindset, that there's two types of people. We've got, on one side, we've got those that have got a fixed mindset. They're the know-it-alls. They have all the, know all the answers. I've been there, done that. I've been doing this for 40 years, maybe 10 years, but you know, they've got all the answers. Then we've got those with the growth mindset. 
teach me more. I want to learn from this. How can I use this? Now, traders, once again, as I go through some ideas and strategies for you today on head stuff, not on trading, is that it doesn't mean that you don't go and verify things. Always feel free to verify, but always be open to learning. It's just so important, traders. Likewise, I'll give you some of the best of the best I can give you. I've been doing this a long time, been dealing with psychology and NLP and for, for many, many years. But in the end, it's up to you to run with it. I can only give it to you. I can only show you the doorway, but you've got to step through it. So it's very, very important. And I love that line. I can only show you the door. You're the one that's got to walk through it. And uh, it's so applicable when it comes to this head stuff, because we, I'm going to be showing you a few things which many of you already know about, things that you need to be doing, but you need to actually start to do them, okay? It's, um, it's just so important that the, some of the ideas that I give you today that you actually implement and you make them what I call non-negotiable. Now, a lot of the things that hold us back from truly succeeding are habits, and we all know that. And we also know, though, it takes a period of time to change a habit. As Mark Twain says, with bad habits, you've got to coax them down the stairs one at a time. In other words, it can be difficult to change a negative habit and to create a good habit. And so what's really important is that we work on it, that we give ourselves time, that we, you know, we give ourselves, as it's stated here in uh, the University of, um, what was it, the College University of London, that's right. They carried out a survey and they've worked out it takes on average about 66 days to create a habit. And so it's very, very important that we work on that and we create the habit. And for example, our daily non-negotiables, which we're going to be looking at very, very soon. I just want to give you a little bit of background on a few really important factors. First of all, let's quickly talk about, or not first of all, we're already underway, but <laughs> covering a number of points. But I want to talk about the psychological damage that is done to traders. Many of you here have already blown your trading accounts two or three times, and many traders have. But what actually happens from that, I suppose it's a little bit like if your father ever raised his voice, and every time he raised his voice, he always whacked you as well. Whenever he raises a voice, what are you going to do? You're going to flinch. Likewise, if you've blown your account a number of times, the negative foundation that you build up, the, what's the word, the negativity, even clicking a finger or, or, or using the mouse, all of this is there. So that's one of the greatest challenges. So we need to start to learn to reframe the experiences that we've had in the past. It's all just been part of our learning up to now. Now, as I sort of started to talk about is that I'm only really going to be scratching the surface today because we could spend literally days and days on trading psychology and creating permanent change for the individual. So I can only give you really an overview today. But, but uh, and let me show you this. And so for the current members in the room, if you go to um, the November coaching folder, you will see now that I've got a lot of the handouts that I'll be referring to. And as you can see, there's a couple of dozen. <laughs> we're not going to be, it's all right, relax. We're not going to be referring to all of them today. But a lot of them are foundation and things that I really want you to and really encourage you that you go back and read. But in the trading psychology webinar folder, for general members, I'm going to upload these onto the website. There will be a folder on the general website called Trading Psychology Webinar. For those of the general public watching this, become a member. You get access to all of this. But so uh, all of the handouts that I'm refer referring to, along with the link, so if you have to leave early, because I know it's, uh, what is it, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard, the link will just be in the general area. So uh, once we upload uh, or upload the um, the session later on today, it will be posted. But a lot of the handouts I refer to, you will find in the training, sorry, trading psychology uh, folder. Let me turn this camera off so we go full screen. So here's what actually happens. We have got a concept that we called learn helplessness. And we've seen this with uh, animal psychology and behavior. When an animal's been badly beaten, no matter how big it is, of course, a cow when you walk near them. 
And we see this, of course, in wartime. Whoops, and I should have actually um, just closed my emails. Let me just do that so we don't get emails popping up left, right and centre. Let's get rid of that. Here we go. And of course, we see that in times of war, we'll see two or three armed soldiers herding along a thousand unarmed men where they could easily be uh, um, uh, taken over and knocked out, etc. But this is an issue or a great challenge that we've got with traders. Now, fortunately, in the group today, we've got people like Jim and Mike and Mark and many of the others where you've got that burning desire to create a lasting long-term income. And I think you have already recognized that you need to leave the past behind you. Now, I'm not saying we don't ignore it because what we can actually do is learn from our past and say, well, what can I learn from this? It's all just been part of my learning experience up to now. It may have been expensive, but hey, a university degree is expensive. But very important, don't let the shadow of your past hold your future hostage. You can do this. Now, if you've executed one winning trade, just one, you can do that again and again and again. But what we've got to deal with is that 90% of the thing that holds us back, and that's our psychology. So creating our future means leaving the past behind. However, we can still use the past as a learning experience. We've got to say to ourselves, based upon what I now know, what will I do differently moving forward? In Australia, we've got um, a TV show, and no doubt um, you get it, of course, in the US and other countries around the world, um, airline disasters. And every case where they're examining an airline disaster and the authorities come in, they're really drilling down. And even if it takes some years to really discover what went wrong. And this is where we need to apply what we call black box thinking to our trading. Success can only happen when we confront our mistakes. You see traders, we can learn a huge amount from our winning trades and our losing trades, but it really comes down to the frame of mind that we approach it with. So what can I learn from this? What can I learn from this? How can I use this moving forward? Now, we've spoken in previous sessions about Curley's law, that one thing, where Curley, of course, I turned around and said, you've discovered that one thing and you've got it, okay? It's likewise, when you solve that one thing or you solve one problem, we have what we call the ripple effect. Likewise, with your trading and with your psychology, what's that one thing? Is there one thing that may be holding you back? And this is where you've got to get off your butt and you've got to start putting these things in writing. And this is one of the greatest challenges. You see, many of you sitting at home and most of you work from home will listen to me rant and rave about the things that you need to do, but you don't actually take action and as Tony Robbins says, what's really important is that you take, if the path to success is to take massive determined action, not action, but massive action. You do that traders and you can do this. If two people can execute a trade the same way, you can do it too. Likewise, if you've had a winning trade, you can replicate that. You can do that time and time again. I love this quote from Tony. The only thing that's keeping you from getting what you want is a story you keep telling yourself. But it also can be what can propel you to your greatest achievements. I like to add the bullshit story. Excuse the language, everyone. You keep telling yourself because it's a story. So many people keep living their story time and time again. Now, I do also believe that we sometimes need assistance in getting through that. And really, that's what this is about, these coaching sessions. Now, I want to just start with, and as a quick reminder, and I know many of you have already set this goal, but I want to talk to you about your mighty why again. And it's so important that you've got a huge mighty why, a huge reason for doing this, because when the why is big enough, the how will appear. For an example, for many of you here, 
you're scalpers or you want to be scalpers. For some of you, you'd like to be more of a day trader. That is maybe a trade every hour, whatever it is. But when you've got that compelling goal, that future in front of you, okay, you can start to move when you're motivated enough. But the challenge is for a lot of you, and I already know from speaking with you, is you don't have that mighty why because you're being too lazy to document it and put it together. You've got to start to work on that. That's so important. Now, this is really beyond today's session because we could spend a couple of hours talking about this, but very briefly, deep-seated beliefs. For an example, what BS story have you got about money? What is your current relationship with money? How do you feel about earning and spending money? Now, what I'd be recommending, as I've done in previous sessions with traders, is to get them to list any negative feelings they've got around money and stories they may have learned as a child. For an example, money doesn't grow on trees. What's that got to do with trading? A huge amount, because we can be held back by our limited or our, our, our limited thinking as far as earning. Okay, um, Mike just said he wants his time back. Well, Mike, yep, we can't get our time back, but you can treat that as a great learning experience up to now. And Mike, you are going to do it. I know you are. Right? I'm so determined to drive you, and I know that you know you're going to do this. Now, when it comes to setting our goals, now. This is a Yale University um, uh, study was put together many years ago, whereby they discovered after 20 years, let me just read this out. You may be interested in some research carried out by Yale University, which proved that 3% of graduates were worth more after a period of 20 years than the other 97% put together. These 3% also had better health and enjoy better relationships. So what did they have the other 97% didn't have? Wealth, um, parental wealth, better degrees, better careers, better a different gender or ethnic uh, origin. No, the 3% had written goals. Now, for the mature age people in the room, and as most of you know, I'm mature age, I'm nearly turning 60, is that you've got to, you know, once again, traders, you're all the same age inside. You are, really. Our bodies may age and mature, but we're still the same age inside. It's so important that we set our goals. And I'm not just talking about a few goals for the next few months, but what's your one year, your three year, your five, 10, 20 and 30 years goal? I don't care if you're 70. What is your 30 year goal? You know, I'm not gonna be ready to go when I'm 90. You know, once again, medicine, the things that they're doing, you've got to have long-term goals. So one, three, five, 10, 20, and 30. What are they? Dare to dream. Now, when it comes to trading, you know, I talk regularly about earning 10,000 a week because I've been there. It's easily, well, let me take that back. It's not easily done because the easy thing is easy not to do, but it's only trading 10 to 20 contracts. And you're there if you're earning between one and 200 a day per contract. That's all it is. But I constantly talk about that as a goal because I just know how achievable it is for those that are open-minded. But let's chunk it down. And I'm a really firm believer traders in this. If you have burnt your account a number of times, and even if you've got five or $10,000, now with the micros, I'm really encouraging you to start with the micros. Invest your main trading account. I want you to develop the belief that yes, you really can do it. By trading an 800 to uh, 600 to $800 account and increasing it, build your beliefs, okay? You do that one strand at a time. And once you get to 6,000, then you start going, for instead of $20 a day, you start going for your 200 a day. Now, we know the massive effect of this. Now, whether it be $600 or 800 you start with, but just $20 a day within, where is it? Within week 29, uh, no, sorry, it's, uh, where are we? I want to get up to 6,000 capital. There it is down here. Let me get it right here. Week 18, you're up to your 6,000. It's taken you 18 weeks. The traders, when you do that and you start to increase the number of micros, the confidence that you build from doing that. And once again, I would 
really strongly recommend. Now, I know that some of you are quite comfortable in life. I know that. Put that money away and start this way and build that belief. And eventually when you get to that 6,000 and you're earning $200 per contract, okay, you're up to your $10,000 a week, 18 weeks later. So within 36 weeks, you're earning, you're earning your 10 grand a week. What other business can you do that? Now, if you're really suffering from a, a belief challenge, remember that spreadsheet, as you know, is on the Google Drive. So you can go and play with those figures. But if we start with only $10 a day, so what if you started trading your micros and you're going for your say 15 to 20 a day to give you a 10 net a day per contract. Okay, it's gonna take you, where is it here? It's gonna take you around 33, 34 weeks to get to your capital where you build it up to 6,000. But can you imagine the inner strength that you've developed in that time? A little bit like going to the gymnasium every day for the next 34 weeks, the strength that you build up over that period of time. And so you may start off with a goal and celebrate. You get $10 per contract, then 15, then 20, and you build your confidence and you take it from there. Now, I'm only talking about this for a moment, just as far as establishing some goals. And we've got to, we're going to start to talk about the beliefs and some of the other things you need to do. Because I think this just isn't the issue for many of you. You may have a goal, but it's the mistakes that you're making on the way through. Now, the bottom line is this here. It would take you, if you only earned $10 a day per contract on the micros, leading up to 100 a day when you start trading the big contracts, it's going to take you 78 weeks to get to 10,000 a week. That's only 19 months. That's only one year and seven months. And as I say to people, Time will pass either way. Where you end up financially in 19 months all depends on the actions you decide to start taking from today moving forward. Now, I just had this thought go through my mind and sometimes I think, okay, I shouldn't say it to you, but I'm going to. The challenge is that some traders will be here now and even on YouTube watching this, oh, this is crap, I don't need this sort of stuff. But nearly in every case, the traders that will want to skip all this, guess what? They're the ones that are losing money or not making the money. We want to be soaking this in every little point because it's that one idea I bring up today may make that difference. Now, it's estimated about 95% of traders never have a written trading plan. And that's where it's really interesting in the book, The Playbook by SMB Capital, by Mike from SMB Capital, where he's still amazed a lot of the professional traders that he deals with still don't have a written trading plan. Now remember traders, um, this a couple of these slides I don't have there for you in writing, but you can go back and take a screenshot of this if you wish. Uh, for my coaching members, uh, actually what I can do, I know my coaching members, you probably love to get this, this presentation, I'll, I'll post it if I forget someone no doubt tomorrow will remind me. So I'll actually post this in the coaching folder so you can actually get hold of this presentation if you like. So trading should be treated as a business. And unfortunately, so many people don't treat it as a business because anyone can open a trading account virtually. So without a trading plan, it's extremely difficult to track your strategies, your entry, your exit points, etc. A lot of these things come down to now implementing and using a daily report card, et cetera, which we're going to get to in a moment. But what's really important, of course, where so many traders fall over is their risk management, for an example, risking more than 2%, their entry criteria, their stop loss, trailing stops, their profit target criteria. So many traders do not have a trading plan. What is your plan? Now to put together a plan, it's essential that we establish some key fundamental guidelines. You must learn how to use your platform. And I know some of the coaching members have asked me to do some more um, uh, lessons on the platform, which we will do in coming weeks. You've also, and so it's important that you know how to move your stop, 
very quickly how you can trail if you need to, how to execute or how to stop and reverse if that's part of your plan. Now, this is really important traders and, and more and more emphasis. And I've really learned that my personality is one of a scalper. This is that you've got to understand your personality. Now, some of you don't want to be in and out. You, you really don't want to have to make that quick, fast decision and it doesn't suit your personality. So you're more of a longer term um, uh, uh, trader. For an example, one of our um, traders emailed me yesterday and he found that there's actually a bug in, in one of our indicators when he tried to set up a six tick Renko with a three period offset. Now a six tick uh, and a three offset on some of, the, some of the markets are really quite long term strategies. But the point is you've got to find a trading time frame that really suits you. Keep your methodology simple. As we know traders, it doesn't have to be complicated. Trading doesn't have to be rocket science. You know, we want to trade those trend continuation strategies. Uh, some of you here, we talk about 2% risk, and I know some of you are only risking 1% and lower. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's absolutely fantastic. Keep your profit objectives realistic and focus on building your account. As we say, focus on the process. And I think, uh, Mike, in your case, I think you mentioned now that you actually cover the uh, the DOM so you can't see your P&L. Now, that's good as long as you're making the wins. <laughs> All right, we of course, uh, and I know, Mike, you do uh, track the losses, of course, make sure it doesn't get out of control. But this is really important. What are we focused on? Very important, of course, we maintain a comprehensive trading journal detailing our entries, our exits, our profit loss market conditions, notes on your emotional um, uh, emotional state. And this is one of the greatest challenges. Once again, traders are not willing to do these things. On the discipline, you know, a lot of this, in my opinion, really comes down to getting back to what we call that hour of power. And that is working on the head stuff every single day. Now, with most televisions, for an example, if you're downstairs, uh, you can even sit there. If you want to sit down and relax on the couch, you can even put YouTube on most TVs now. And so you can be watching some, uh, say, Mark Douglas and his um, uh, videos on trading psychology on YouTube while you're sitting down on the couch, relaxing. You know, as I say to people, what is your television costing you? In other words, Many traders, instead of doing their hour of power, uh, and maybe it's only 30 minutes, and I've got this in a document for you in a moment, but what's your television costing you because you're more interested in sitting in front of what we call the idiot box instead of focusing on your career? I want you just to think about that. Be very careful of ego depletion and decision fatigue when we're trading for extended periods of time. Likewise, if you've had an argument with your partner, um, uh, you're stressed, angry, or whatever. Don't trade. As most of you know, I love my red of the weekend now, but make sure that um, you don't decide to uh, crack a red or a beer. Um, uh, Mike, you don't watch TV, fantastic. Uh, whilst you're trading, very, very easy to do. Don't chase lost money. Uh, take a day off or two after a big win. And if you're more of a swing trader, especially, now, initially, and this comes up regularly, is that when you hit your target of, say, if your target's 300, do you stop for the day? Well, you know, if that comes down to philosophies, you can keep trading, but if you then hit one loss, so like some days, if we get a great trend day and you keep following the trend, you might be up five or $600 per contract. You don't want to give too much of that back. You have a, lo you have a losing trade, then maybe step aside for the rest of the day. Take it off. Now, as far as our trading journal goes, it really comes down to the details and information. Now, I will say, I don't take all these details and I'll tell you why. I would be writing, I'd spend hours writing this down, right? Like the date, time, entry, exit. If you're a scalper, you might do 20 trades a day. You know, it, it can be, you know, what I'm saying is I don't do all of these things. If you're a swing trader, absolutely, it's easy. Or only executing two or three trades. But, you know, the overall basis here of keeping most of this information, one thing I do do, as most of you know, is a screenshot of the charts. 
Uh, what did I put there? I did three screenshots yesterday, some really, and actually in coaching members, we're going to be covering those in the next few days, of some really important, um, uh, some great feedback for you, just on a couple of things. For an example, if you're trading counter trend, and as most of you know, I'm very much against new traders trading CT, very much against it, until you're consistently profitable and even then being extremely cautious. Except, actually let me remove the word except. When you do or if you decide to take them, what's really important is the distance between your entry and the 34 EMA. If you're a good five to six or even more ticks away from that 34 EMA, the probabilities of that trade, that CT trade working, goes through the roof, all right? So I just took some screenshots for some examples for you of that. So if you were to ever make exceptions to the rule, that may be then when you've got those. But once again, you wanna do your screenshots and review those on a regular basis. Now, we've spoken a lot about our thinking and you hear me talk and, and quoting uh, the great Jim Rowan, you know, we all suffer from stinking thinking. We need to give ourselves, uh, actually, sorry, that wasn't Jim Rowan, that was uh, Zig Ziglar, <laughs> who's passed away some years ago now. He used to say, we all suffer from a hardening of the attitudes and we suffer from stinking thinking. We need to give ourselves a regular checkup from the neck up, Zig Ziglar. <laughs> um, and it really comes down to traders, the questions that we're asking ourselves. Now, what Tony Robbins promotes is for us to say, what can I learn from this? Traders, if you're finding things tough, I want you to start to ask yourself, what can I learn from this? What's great about this? Yes, what's great about this? Because what can you learn from this? What's not perfect? Now, what are some of the presuppositions with the questions that we're asking. What can I learn from this? I can learn from this. What's great about this? Well, I just had a loss, but hey, I just learned I should never do that again. I shouldn't do this. What's not perfect yet? What am I willing to do to make it the way I want it? What am I willing not to do? Now, this is really important. How can I enjoy the process along the way? So let's just say here, you say, right, I'm going to go and um, go back and back test 1,000, let me give you, say two Bs, 1,000. How can I enjoy the process? Well, you might put some nice music on in the background. You might, um, uh, maybe you, you really enjoy coffee, but you set your mindset up, traders, that you enjoy it, you make it enjoyable, okay? And where it says here, the questions must be asked in a great state, you hear me talk about state management all the time, getting in your peak state. If you saw me here, I'd, if anyone was looking through the window right now, I'd look through and I'd see, you know, they'd think there's a madman in there because I'm waving my arms around and because I get into it, but it's about getting in state. And Mark just said, used to listen to Zig Ziglar on cassette tapes, loved it. Oh, he was fantastic, wasn't he? he talking about his redhead, <laughs> his wife, he used to call her the redhead. Right, so, but traders, this is where so many of us really suffer. For an example, one of the best things we can do if we're feeling down, if we're feeling depressed, is to change our physiology. Get out of your chair, go for a walk, go for a jog, go to the gym, you know, change your state. And these are all NLP techniques that we're gonna be looking at in a moment. But first of all, we need to make some decisions, traders. And, you know, the decision that you've gotta to start to make, you've gotta get pissed off with yourself. And Jan, I'm sorry about my language and some of the others in the room, right? I want you to get as mad as hell. I want you to get flipping angry. And if you haven't already seen it, there's a great skit with Peter Finch. Uh, and this is a, a this is actually a PDF, but you can go on there and get Peter Finch, I'm as mad as hell, and you'll be able to watch this five minute video, a clip out of a great movie uh, from the 1970s. 
And I want you to get up now, go to the chairs, I want you to get up and open the windows and watch him do it. And I want you to do that with yourself when it comes to your trading. I promise you, you go and do this a few times and start yelling, I'm not gonna put up with this anymore, I'm not gonna put up with my behavior anymore. The state shift that we'll make is enormous. The challenge is many of you won't do it. And because you won't do a lot of the things that we're talking about here today or other things that you know will work, that is taking massive action, you're not going to get there. So the pathway to power is to really say to yourself, how am I going to live today in order to create tom the tomorrow I'm committed to? If you want to truly succeed as a trader, you've got to start taking massive action. And we do know, and Van Tharp talks a lot about this, we bring the challenges that we have in our life to our trading, okay? That is, if we're suffering, if we're unorganized, if we're negative, um, uh, if we're not perhaps paying our bills and if we're rude, uh, there's a lot of these challenges for many of us that if we are like that in the real life, we bring those, that sort of, those issues to our trading. And once again, traders, as you know, I don't like offending anyone. I don't want to offend anyone, but you need to know this. So a critical question to ask ourselves, who do we need to become to become one of the best traders in the world? So I've uploaded this document and many of you have already seen this document. Let's start here. And if you're truly serious about this, if you went, say, for a job interview and it was with a prop firm and they turned around and said, well, you're going to be going through the next three months in internship here and you've got the potential here of earning 100 to a $1 million dollars a year but there's a few documents you've got to fill out and really work on. Would you do it? Of course you would. You've got no choice. Meaning that with these documents, near in Word, yes, you can type the doc, being Word, you can type the answers in, but what's been proven if you put pen to paper, it has greater impact. But it's about being honest with yourselves. Who do I need to become to be one of the best traders in the world? If you don't know what the problem is, you can't fix it. Who do I need to become to become one of the best traders in the world? I need to become disciplined. I need to become patient. Whatever they may be, the more the better. You might come up with 30 things. Now, as we know, and um, at SMB Capital, something I've really learned from, from their teaching is you might end up with 20 or 30 goals in the end, but what they say is focus on one only. You might have one major goal a month. Accomplish that and then go to another. For an example, when we get to a daily checklist, I'll put together uh, what are your daily non-negotiables, which we'll look at in a moment. And after I put it together, and I, only, I put it together this morning for you, I actually wrote down on it, uh, for my notes to mention, be careful of overwhelm. That is, I've got a checklist of 34 things each day I've got to do and I look at it and sometimes, and seriously, I'll put everything down I've got to do. I've got to check my emails. I've got to do this, I've got to do that. But you can actually deal with overwhelm. So it may be that you need to chunk it down and change a little. Just on, So I am aware of that. But initially, who do you need to become? What actions do I need to take on a daily basis? For an example, Mike, Mark, some of the others, what actions do you need to take on a daily basis to become one of the best? Maybe we even drill down even further. What actions do you know you, you, know you need to be taking that you're not undertaking every day right now? What are they? Write them down. You need to know traders because if you don't measure it, you can't improve it. It's so important. These are the things that winning traders are willing to do. And if you went to work for a prop firm, this is what they'd require from you. Then it leads, leads us into a daily report card. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, this is one of these non-negotiables. In fact, let me bring this up right now. Where did I put it? I've uploaded this for you. And once again, traders, tailor this to suit you, all right? 
if if you don't have a 500,000 a year income plan, okay, that's fine. It might be 50, it might only be 25,000. Your goal's got to be your own goal. Very important in the end. But is it your best? In other words, if you're capable of earning 500,000 a year, but you're being weak, right, because you don't want to go and implement your discipline, etc. well, that's not good. But if, say, 25,000 is the most you can earn for whatever reason, maybe you have a real serious a health issue, or maybe, yeah, maybe there is some condition that stops you from sitting in front of a screen any more than an hour a day, or whatever, set a goal that suits you, but make sure it's a real goal, okay? Is that I've got here my 500,000 a year goal. Now, this is for you, whatever, okay? So just change that for whatever, and I just put a, an arbitrary figure in there. What are my daily non-negotiables? So I just listed a few things here for you. Reviewing my goals and my trading plan. That is a non-negotiable. Now, what you may choose to do is maybe put down that 10 minutes. Yourself in LP, you don't need to, in the end, once you understand, say, the swish, in LP, the swish technique and um, some of the others, you, you may only need the visual squash 10 minutes a day. That's all it takes. So you might write down 10 minutes. My affirmations. Your affirmations, you can say to yourself as you drive around, as you walk around, that might take you five to 10 minutes a day. And affirmations, you're constantly repeating yourself. Your hour of power. And as I've got here, maybe it's only 30 minutes a day. We're well, reading some good stuff, okay? You're reading the good books. Maybe, and, and by the way, in the hour of power, it also include good videos. Journaling of my tra my trading activities. Checking red flag, takes you one minute. All right, three minutes. <laughs> Reviewing my marked up charts. My workout fitness health plan. To me, traders, uh, that is now a non-negotiable. All right, uh, and of course we've got um, uh, Jim. I think you're at the, uh, Jim. You're at the gym, and of course I know Terry's a big one on his bike. Uh, it's it's so important, traders, that we look after our fitness, our health. So important because that then affects our focus and the decisions that we make. We need to, of course, deliberate practice, particularly before we go live with our real account. If we're trading a real account, you might only do maybe 30, 50, maybe 30 minutes a day going back over the trades because you're trading live. What else should you be doing? There may be, uh, and I'm not gonna pull up my list because I know some of you do get overwhelmed. Now, this has been up, uploaded for you. So what are your non-negotiables? One of those is your daily report card. And just coincidentally, then when I went and got um, uh, one good trade and of course uh, the book, the playbook at SMB, virtually half the questions here are the questions they also use, which is pretty logical. You know, what did I learn from today? What did I learn from my winning trades? What about my losing trades? What about my entries? What about my stops? What about my targets? For an example, one of the things you might start to do is using maybe the ATR, what if you were scalping, say, for six to eight ticks, but what if then besides every trade, you were to put down what is the maximum move you could have achieved, okay? Um, and uh, coaching members, actually, I'm gonna get digressing. I wanna to talk to you tomorrow. I'm gonna to show you something tomorrow using a two-period EMA along with the eight-period EMA in staying with a trade. And um, I'll, I'll cover that with you tomorrow. I've got some notes on it. I think you'll just find it interesting. If you don't have the ATR, I'll show you how to use the two-period EMA, and some may even prefer it. But let me show you that tomorrow. So what's the ideal stop? What's the ideal target? What was great about today? What did I do right? What will I no, no longer do? What will I do differently tomorrow? How can I better qualify? So you can see the points. You need to do this while this is fresh in your mind. Fantastic, Jim. Jim just said he's in the gym four times a week. And what that does, it, you know, discipline and patience, all of these things are also like muscles. Like, as you know, Jim, the more often you go to the gym, the stronger you become. 
Likewise, the more often you practice discipline and patience, the stronger you become in those areas. Now, getting back to what we said about trading, trading is a business. If you were to run a business without keeping your books, you're probably going to go out of business or the tax office is going to be knocking on your door, etc. So it's so important. These are non-negotiables. I pretty much mentioned earlier about really the power of questions that we're saying to ourselves is that in the questions that we ask, can I really do this? Um, uh, why does this always happen to me? Oh, damn it, did it again. Now, for master traders, what can I learn from this? How can I use this? What's great about this? What will I not do next time? Right, it's so important. But you know what these things are, traders? These things are what we call habits. These are habits. We need to create the habit of asking the right questions, of evaluating what we're saying to ourselves. Now, I won't go right through this, but the power of words, and Tony Robbins, once again, is another big one on the power of words. And of course, you've um, we spoke about last week in the coaching, we spoke about one of our members who was kind enough to allow me to share it with you, where he, what the, he called it his wall of shame. And of course, that can be extremely dis destructive. You know, it's really about attitude and reframing their learning experiences. And likewise, in the handouts, I've got a handout there on learning experiences and mistakes made in the past, but what not to do again. So I've actually posted uh, mistakes I've made and many of our other traders have made in the past as learning experiences because it's how we learn when we look at these, right? As we say here, as I say here, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Trading errors and mistakes are no longer make. You might choose to reframe these and set them up almost as, as affirmations, to read them regularly. Once again, not to overwhelm yourself, but are there classic things that you should be doing? For an example, moving stops. It's still a major issue with traders that I still have reports. Every week I move a stop. I know I shouldn't have done it and got stopped again. And, and you know, I, I seriously, sometimes I just, just can't believe some of the mistakes, not even mistakes, the bad habits that traders continually repeat. Um, my wife and I, we went um, to a local um, uh, uh, tavern last week just near my home here. A tavern in, uh, in America, I think you've got taverns over there, like a pub, a hotel, where they also serve meals. And so we're having what we call a, a pub meal. And this gentleman, and they've got other slot machines out the back, the pokies. And this gentleman, while we're eating, there was not too far behind us an ATM machine there. He would have come out, I would say, at least eight times while we're sitting there having our meal. He came out at least eight times and got more money, then went back into the slot machines and went through that money, no doubt, and he'd come out and keep going in and out, in and out. And I was just thinking about the amount of traders that keep that I know of that keep moving their stops uh, for the negative, hoping that the market's going to turn and only have a massive stop out. Now, these are just, you know, they're just bad habits. Um, drinking alcohol, taking, uh, still amazed at the amount of traders that I even know today that will still take drugs or particularly cocaine is still a major issue with traders. It really is, particularly with prop firms. It is a major issue. Some of you know the story of that, no, I won't even go there, but the story that of a speaker we had that was a big trader and he was always asking, oh, where can I get some cocaine from? Anyway, so, but look, read that. Uh, what? Because once again, if you don't know what your issues are, you can't deal with them. Okay, so go through them. Are there mistakes in here? But you keep, like not journaling every day, not keeping your trade stats. What are they? So you see, it's a pretty comprehensive list. So traders, have a look at that. Tailor it to suit your needs. So as far as words, I can't, I can. It's hard, it's a challenge. Uh, problem is a challenge. You know, what's the opportunity here? With myself, struggle, working towards, learning from. 
right? So words can be empowering and they certainly can be disempowering as well. Let's talk about NLP and some real practical things that we can be doing. Now, NLP, of course, we can use for so many different things, breaking a phobia, a habit, whether it be chewing your fingernails, um, uh, you know, fear of, of aeroplanes, there's so many different things that we can use NLP for. The challenge is that I still find is a lot of people are still very close-minded that NLP will work for them. They're not even willing to give it a go. But as I also try, say traders, you also can't be half pregnant. Meaning if you're really serious about succeeding as a trader, you can't say I'll give it a go. And this is where I'll still have traders say to me, oh look, I'll buy your course and give it a go. And I'll, I'll, if, if I'm dealing with them, I'll say, well look, it really, I, I wouldn't worry about buying them because it takes more than that. It takes serious commitment. So likewise, when it comes to NLP, you need to do it correctly. You need to apply yourself, which is really important. So let's have a look at a few ideas I've got for you with this. So what are some of the NLP tools and strategies for traders? Well, we've got what we call the Dickens pattern. Now the Dickens pattern is where you're going forward in time and back. Now, the best way to learn that pattern is to go onto YouTube or to study what Tony Robbins says. All right, the Dickens pattern we could spend, hard, it takes about half an hour to go through the Dickens pattern correctly. But I want you to write it down and to YouTube it and to go onto Google. It's very, very powerful, but let me warn you, it takes some time to do it. Now, if anyone's got any of Tony Robbins uh, work, uh, what would it be in? I think in Personal Power 2, I think he's got it also in Get the Edge. He's got it in a number of his um, uh, CDs. <coughs> Excuse me, one moment, just one sec. coughing and spluttering here, um, where you can really study it. But there's a lot of others. That, but I think Tony really, he, he really labelled it and called it the Dickens pattern, but it's very, very good. The swish pattern, which we're going to look at in a moment, is nothing short of brilliant when it comes to creating permanent change. Change does not have to be uh, take time. You can do it very, very quickly. In fact, no, it's not there yet. I was about to say, I thought that on the next next slide. The movie theatre rewind. That is where, and once again, in the books we're going to, I'm going to refer you to in a moment, it's a great strategy where you imagine you're in a movie theatre in the projection room, looking down at yourself, looking at a certain thing. So if you want to come over a fear, a fear or a phobia, you see yourself in the movie. So you're in the you're in the projection booth, looking down on all the seats. You're looking at yourself sitting there, watching yourself on the big screen. It's in, extremely powerful for overcoming phobias and bad experiences, right? But there's a process to it. Now, in Awaken a Giant Within, uh, in, in a couple of handouts I've got for you, it's a really good breakdown of that. Now, for an example, what I've done for you traders is there is a PDF copy of the book, Get the Life You Want, in the handouts here. But I've also gone through, and so I've acknowledged to you Richard Bandler, and this is his info here out of his book. I've gone through and put down for you how to feel wonderful, changing bad uh, feelings, uh, the, ch the belief change, changing your mood, getting over bad decisions. Uh, bad thoughts. So what I've done is put them down on this Word document for you, belief swish pattern, just to make it a little bit easier. So I've, in reading this book, there are some of the key ones that I think are really good for you as traders and to do this. With that being said, I still recommend you read the book because then it'll just give you more background on these strategies. Likewise, when it comes to NLP anchoring, 
I've got uh, some great articles there on anchoring and how you anchor, etc. So I'm not going to go through it all. We'll spend a lot of time, but uh, there's some great articles there for you. Now, we've also got there hypnotherapy, and I've now got a couple of members have actually gone to the hypnotherapist with this NLP script, and where it's a combination of between hypnotherapy and NLP, and this is your hypnotherapist reading your sound. I want you to visualize and see yourself as a fit, focused, confident, disciplined, sharp, decisive day trader. You are a world-class day trader that follows your trading rules without hesitation or fear. When trading, you sit comfortably, calmly. So your hypnotherapist is reading these out to you. You execute your trades flawlessly. What do you wish? Who do you wish to become? Okay, so he's reading these out or she's reading these out. Now, what you would do is you'd have this, when someone reads it out, put them on a CD for you. And you actually visualize this. You've heard me um, talk about a lot of the CDs that I have when I retire of needing, I'll put them on. It works, traders, where you can go to bed put it on and fall asleep to them. And so once you've had it recorded, put down, you can use it then ongoing. You can have it tailored to suit you. Traders, the challenge is many people are not willing to take the action to do this. So you've got the script. So find the person to read it out to you, whoops, uh, because it really does work. Likewise, with your affirmations, I've also uploaded this, and so general members, all the coaching members, you already have this, but different types of affirmations when it comes to trading. When you walk your dog, put these down on three by five cards, or once again, better still, put them on a CD, put them on a memory stick, or uh, however you want to do it, and listen to these. All right, read your affirmations. As you're trading, it might be a quiet time, pull out your affirmations list. Go through your affirmations list. Okay, so very, very powerful. Uh, yes, Mike, but all of these are uploaded, mate, into that um, trading file in the coaching area. Okay, so you can, no worries, mate. So you can download all of these. But once again, don't put something down that doesn't resonate. Oh, that's, oh, gee, I don't like that statement. Well, don't use it, right? Create something. Like I love having ice cold blood in my veins, cold, hard and disciplined. All right, I love that. <laughs> but if that doesn't resonate with you, don't put it down. Put down stuff that suits you, okay? Very, very important you tailor it for yourself. Now, what else did I have there? Was it that one there? No, that one, oh, okay. Then I've got this one here on self, uh, other affirmations, okay, which you can then put down. But but have a look at that. Okay, next one is the visual squash. Now, the visual squash is, is really explained well in some of the books, and that is where you're pulling the person that you wish to become into your own body, and it works. For an example, finding someone that resonates. Um, yes, you can, John. You can use your own voice. Good question. John just asked, can you use your own voice, tailored? Absolutely. Absolutely, John, you really can. And what I'd recommend, mate, is when you do it, you stand, okay, so you can breathe correctly, etc. And as most of you know, I'm a big one now on standing desks for traders. I really am. Uh, I really think it just helps. If you saw me back, now I know of course, that I'm presenting right now, but my shoulders are pulled back, uh, my chest is high, I'm, I'm in state. And when you trade, you want to get out of that chair, when you're slumping forward, you want to be able to breathe. It's, you're welcome, John. Very, very important. So when it comes to NLP and pulling the trade of a person that you wish to be, the visual squash, where you're wrapping your arms around and you pull them into your body. This is called modeling. But you can also model a pilot. And in the handouts folder that I've got for you, you'll see there's some links 
to some uh, on YouTube of pilots landing planes. That can have an incredible powerful effect for you. And I really encourage you traders to go and watch videos on YouTube of the Wall Street Warriors, etc. Now, let me say this though. I want to say though, there's a condition that you also approach constructively because a lot of them do some real dumb things. Uh, like the ones in the UK, there's one there called Million, Million Dollar Traders, I think it is. This guy recruited a room full of people and they were flapping around and I'll tell you what, there's no way known I'd have them trading for me. You should have seen how incongruent and how lost they were. Seriously, he was pretty much leaving them in the room half the time. That's no way to train. Right, so when you do watch them, have the approaches, what can I take away from this? What would I do, what wouldn't I do? Okay, because there's still some really good stuff there. Like with the Wall Street Warriors, there's some really good stuff there that you can pick up and also find it motivating. But the fixed minded person would be negative about a lot of it, but you can really learn from it. So you want to model a pilot for being calm and taking a disciplined approach. And as we know, we've got a couple of pilots here. They're, um, and, and I don't start posting comments or get lost. Uh, we've, I'll tell you all about that. But really, it makes a massive difference, traders. So I've also uploaded this book. Traders, you've got to read it, all right? It's, it's what I call a non-negotiable. And this is where he talks about, this is ridiculous enough, so I'm not going to put up with my bullshit anymore. He doesn't actually say that. Look, when I swear it's to put emphasis on a point, okay, enough is enough, I'm not going to put up with my negative shit, you know, whatever it is, you've got to say it like you mean it, right? It's just so important, traders, you really get into it. And so I'll throw, it's a bit like, um, and, and many of you have heard me talk about this article um, about swearing, is that uh, a cut out of a paper, muscle strength and stamina can be boosted by letting out a few profanities, a study has found. Okay, so to swear as you're going along, it can actually release positive chemicals that you can use. Likewise, you know, maybe can you do that when you trade? Just maybe. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, John, I won't say it, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> do that. I'm not willing to put up with this. This is it. All right, so look at that. But I'm not going to put up with this anymore. But stand it and say it like um, Peter Finch. This is it. I'm not going to put up with it anymore. I also want you to really, if you haven't already, awaken the giant within, right? How to take a media, and you truly can. Now, Tony Robbins, of course, did his initial work with Richard Bandler and John Grindler. He didn't actually complete. They kicked him out of the course, just so you know. Um, and having the qualifications, to me, makes no difference and they kicked him out because he <laughs> he was running out and doing crazy things and wanting to change people very quickly and uh so the bottom line uh, you do that every day jim is that uh but the the strategies and ideas love him or hate him he's got some great stuff there okay he really does and so read the book traders now i've got the 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 uh ebook is uploaded for you but go and buy the book okay uh, it's really well worth it. Now, likewise, some of the other ones, NLP, Frogs and the Prince, these are two, two books that I've had for years. I think, uh, members, you've seen me pull this one up. And this is the one where it's funny. In there, that's the one where they refers to the lady that was a homosexual and she wanted to go straight. It was just funny the way they had it worded. Things have changed, of course. But anyway, all NLP techniques in creating lasting and permanent change. So some of the strategies very quickly, the swish pattern. Every trader must do the swish, right? Stand in front of your screen, down bottom right hand, who you wish to be, up in front of you, the trader you wish to remove, and you have, it, have that trader explode through that picture. Now, in the handouts, we've got the, uh, the script to actually use for that. Okay, so I've done it, typed it up word for word for you. And where is it? Uh, getting state questions. So I'm just trying to find this thing for you. Swearing for agreements, rubber band tick. Oh, look, also, I won't go through it now, but there's a rubber band technique as well. Where's it gone? Get the life you want. 
Look, it's there in, in the folder anyway, the actual words to use. And, and there's also a link traders, and sorry if I'm repeating myself because the old members, you've heard this many times, of a, a seminar that Tony Robbins did many, many years ago. And he's very, very young in it, but it's very good, right? Where he's practicing the swish technique, where if you want to look at something modern, there's a lot more on YouTube. But what I've done is taken a transcript from that seminar and reworded it to suit you as a trader word for word. And here it is, right? I just noticed that here I've got it up there. There it is. The link then I've taken the script except rather than sit down as he has the audience do. So watch the video five or six times. So it'll really get to teach you how to do it, but make sure you stand when you do it. Very, very important. Okay, uh, very, very important, but that's very powerful. But I've also got there another document there on the swish pattern, just on cues, identifying just some additional tips that you may find useful. All of these, everything I'm showing you here, traders, all of these are in the folder. Okay, so you don't have to go looking for them. They're all in the folder. Now, an NLP reframe, what is that? A reframe is reframing the meaning. Many of you know when I have a loss, I automatically, see, it's, it's a habit now. It's just an automatic reflex. And sorry if that's really loud when I do that. A reframe, I have a loss, great. And one, one closer to a winner, you know, it's a reframe. I've reframed the meaning of it. It's very, very powerful traders. It really is reframing the experience of meaning of something. Like, for an example, um, you're, you're driving along, and you're caught in traffic, okay? Gee whiz, so don't get frustrated, get fascinated. That's a reframe, reframing the meaning. The circus, the movie, rewind, okay? Running the memory backwards. Once again, there's a lot of good stuff on YouTube about that. Tony Robbins talks a lot about that. I won't go into anchoring. Like, you know, when I slap my fist, that is an anchor. The five by five, yes I can, five by five, yes I can. These are what we call anchors. That's what these are. We're anchoring these experiences to ourselves, okay? I step into my future. I step into the vision of who I wish to be. So for an example, Mike, I want you to stand there and see the trade of it, the great trade of you wish to become and you are becoming in front of you. I want you to see how that trader would be standing, breathing, thinking, how they're holding their shoulders, all right? Look into their eyes, see the directness, right? I want you to really get congruent, right? Where you can see it, feel it, maybe smell it, right? When I say smell it, maybe that person wears really good aftershave, okay? Because they, they can afford it. <laughs> I want you to then to step into that vision. The visual squash is where you pull them into yourself. You can do it a number of ways, okay? But you do it regularly. It's like tuning a piano. You've got to do it regularly. Negative past experiences, you leave it behind you. Most of us, when we have a negative experience, we visualize it, we see it usually, and this comes down to what we call submodalities, where we'll see that in full color in front of us. What you want to do is you want to paint it out or white out in your mind or make it black and white, put it behind you. Right? It's a technique which you'll learn in those NLP books. Turn the brightness down, shrink it, turn the brightness up. For an example, that great trader you're about to become, turn it up, make yourself larger, larger than life. These are all NLP techniques. And here, for an example, and the reason that's there is why is it there? Print out pictures like this. If the, the trade is it you're becoming, okay? Likewise, you can see how they're dressed. And these are traders, yet they're wearing their shirts and ties. And I've spoken about this, the concept of being the naked trader, right? Sounds good, but on the other hand, what sort of state or mental state are you going to be in if you're sitting there, sitting there in your PJs trading? Now, you may be mighty fine with that, but just remember you need to be in a peak state. Now, the Swiss pattern, we've pretty much um, uh, spoken about that. If you're very new to Swiss, you might want to 
um, look at two or three videos on YouTube on the swish pattern and look at it. Now, all of these things we're talking about, I know it's new to many of you and foreign. Treat this as a research. You're researching, you're putting together a research report on all of this, okay? Um, for example, this is something that CAM provided, um, which is really good. How to learn anything in four steps with a Feynman uh, technique. And I've uploaded, yes, this is uploaded, and there's four different techniques or four different steps to learn something very, very quickly. Well, to make sure you learn it properly. Now, there's, there are some things on YouTube and, and Google, but it's not a huge amount on there. But it's a really, just imagine you had to teach a strategy or you had to teach uh, NLP. Pick a topic, topic you want to understand and start studying. Write down everything you know about the topic on a notebook page and add to that page every time you learn something new about it. For an example, if you're a new member or if you're still picking up ideas about the strategies, you might, in your spiral notebook at the back, have different pages for every setup, like T4 and the, um, the um, T2 and the 34B. Allow a couple of pages and just put the name of the strategy at the top of the page. Yes, you can type this up as well. And every time I come up with a, a tip or an idea for you or something you haven't heard, go back to the page. Oh, didn't know that one. Or, oh, gee, I haven't got this one down. And you jot it down on the page, okay? And so you're basically putting together a research report on every topic, on every setup, etc. Now, mentally then, pretend you have to then teach your topic to a classroom. Make sure you're able to, to explain the topic in simple terms. You quite often see me for in session one, you hear me talk about, imagine I'm a Labrador <laughs> or, or a 12 year old. And so you, you want to be able to break it down. So this is really good about how to learn something. So uh, read the article traders. It's just some really good tips there as well. Okay, well, the next slide is where are we here? Now, further ones is visual squash. Uh, now, you can do this, and this in the Frogs and the Princesses uh, book, they use the example of the, uh, the lady <laughs> who wanted to uh, go straight and had a relationship with a male. So that's really interesting, but you can also do the same with a sniper. Now, for some of you, uh, if you've got a military background or um, uh, Maybe this won't work for you, but it, if you just imagine a sniper or a um, or a, uh, a marine. Okay, I've got a friend of mine that uh, was in Vietnam who's a marine, and she is incredible. And stand a person standing in front of you. What qualities of that person do you want? The mental strength. I mean, the things he could go through. And so you pull, and like being a sniper, the quality of a sniper. Maybe you're a marine, but you're a sniper which means you're patient, you're disciplined, you're strong, and you pull that person into your body. Now, a lot of these techniques are described, I want you to get a good understanding, are described in these books. Now, likewise, you've also then got the plexiglass shield. That is, if you take things to heart, or you know, people offend you easily, or you've got to go into a difficult conversation, or someone's about to tell you off, maybe your partner wants to sit down and have a chat to you about something. Just imagine you're surrounded by plexiglass and you see the negatives and the words bounce off. That can work really well, right? Then you can see yourself as a sniper laying there, etc. And likewise with these, you go back and you practice your visualization techniques with that. That is, you go to bed and you close your eyes and you walk your way through it. Okay, you see yourself executing your trades, etc. Another reframe, reframe here is rather than trading mistakes, trading learning experience. I just had a good <laughs> learning experience. It cost me a few dollars, but you know what? I've just learned from that. But you know what? Isn't it better you do that on one contract rather than be trading 10 contracts? Now, as far as negative thoughts, and this is something where, you know, I'd really encourage you traders to think about this. Now, I've uploaded a great document here, and I think 
it mightn't be in this document, but I've what I've done here is I've put together four or five, it might be, I don't know how many documents, there's a lot of stuff I've got here, which I've had for ages, just on the disciplined trader, becoming a winning trader, etc. I've just put them all on the one document, okay? And what was the point I was gonna bring up about the mindset? There was a point there. Oh, okay, is to really develop the habit and to sit back and be thinking, what have I been thinking the last few hours? For example, what's my number one thing right now? What am I focused on right now? What am I thinking about right now? What's the best use of my time right now? Is that sometimes you need to learn to say stop or cancel or to use the rubber band technique, to flick the rubber band if you're thinking negative, such as I can't do this, I'm, I'm, I always stuff this up. That's all BS self language. You've got to change that. So one of the ways is to you simply yell out to yourself, stop or cancel, develop that habit. Likewise, uh, when you have that winning trade is to anchor it to yourself. Yes, 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 right? Sorry if that's loud. By the way, is that loud? Does that come across really loud when I do that? <laughs> if so, I'll just be more conscious of it. But that's what we call anchoring traders. And when you, it doesn't, good, Mike, because when you want to then create that and you want to get out of that stinking thinking state, you start pumping your fists and you can immediately get out of it. Now, for those skeptics there that don't have an understanding of it, it's a little bit like you can be driving along in the car feeling one way, you, feel, you hear a song from many years ago, perhaps when you were with your love of your life back then, and it can change your state the way you're feeling immediately. Right, um, just like um, I heard uh, Shiloh by Neil Diamond on the radio yesterday and um, uh, my father passed last year and it was one of the songs that I played at his funeral because he used to love that song. And I heard it and immediately it took me back um, uh, to that time, all right? And I just thought of them, my father, my brother actually who passed away just late last year, it's his birthday today, I just thought of it, thinking of that. But um, uh, you see, once again, these are anchors that take you back experiences. But likewise, we can anchor to ourselves positive stuff. Yes, 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 five by five, yes, I can. These are the things you can do. Because traders, when we're in a powerful state, we can do powerful things. We can make changes. Okay, moving on. So most people have got no idea of the incredible capacity that they can immediately command when we focus all of our resources on mastering a single, if you could see me now, I'd throw my arms around like a madman, okay? There are three steps to creating lasting change. Number one, raise your standards. Set a baseline standard for yourself that no one else would expect from you. In other words, for example, Jim, when you go to the gym, how many times might have you felt, oh, I couldn't be bothered doing it today, but I'm going to do it? Uh, you know, with things like that where, but when, once you do do it, you're so happy you did it. So that's a standard. It's a baseline standard. Your non-negotiables are a standard that you must practice those every day. Now, for example, this is it. There's no turning back. Likewise, burn the boats. Okay, there's no turning back. You make a decision. Likewise, when it comes to the four agreements, now I've uploaded a PDF to the four agreements for you, which is just a book summary. Many of you have heard of the book. Yeah, and Jim just said, yes, you're right. The four agreements is a fantastic, you can read it in an hour, but a really good book. And for many of you, it'd be hard to keep, but you do this, it'll change your life. And here's what the four agreements are. It's about being true to your word. The first agreement, be impeccable with your word to yourself, to your partner, to your loved ones, to people you do business with, be impeccable, okay? All of a sudden, when you say that, you start to, you get a shift in your body. I promise you really will read the book. Second agreement, don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions, always do your best. And the point here is when you raise your standards, and one of the standards are that you live the four agreements, it will be life changing. So have a close look at that. 
So you must raise your standards from good to outstanding because that's where the top 10% of traders live. As we discussed, Dr. Brett with uh, SMB Capital, when one of the traders, when he said to him, how was your trading? He said, good, well, good is not good enough. That's not good enough. It's got to be outstanding. And that's where it comes down to this document, which I won't go through. You can read this, the mindset, the winning mindset of a trader. All right, so I'll put together some really good articles there on that. But traders, you need to implement these things. You need to take action. So step two, remember there were three steps. Number one is, of course, is your, gee whiz, I'm forgetting here, <laughs> raise your standards. Number two is change your limiting beliefs. Now, with our beliefs, we all suffer from what we call viruses of the mind. And of course, doctor, and look, when you read um, uh, this book, if you haven't read or if you're not familiar with any of uh, Wayne Dyer's materials, his first book many, many years ago was Your Erroneous Science. And as many of you know, got a lot of his material and studied him a great deal over the years. He totally changed from when he first started out as a clinical psychologist, where he'd become a very, very spiritual man over the years. And he talks about in that book, Viruses of the Mind, his method of change is very different to say Tony Robbins. But one thing I do love is the his metaphor there of viruses, that our family, our loved ones plant things in our head. And that's why I say be very careful who you share your dreams with, right? Because, you know, they're always willing to say, you couldn't do that. You'll never master that. I knew a trader once that lost all his money. Oh, my next one over, he tried, he tried day trading. You know, he failed. Now, these are viruses. They don't mean to, but they plant these viruses and they start to multiply. And then when you go and read and study the biology of belief, and when you start to understand that beliefs are things and how they can actually change your DNA makes a huge difference. We need to start to develop empowering beliefs. We must develop a sense of certainty that we can and will meet new standards before we actually do. Um, just like you're more, you're far more powerful, it's far more powerful to behave your way into a new way of thinking than think your way into a new way of behaving, such as it's more powerful to actually start going to the gym every day than thinking I'm going to go to the gym, but doing it and physically doing it, okay, if that makes sense. And the last thing is to change your strategy. That is, we need to change the things. In life, lots of people know what to do, but few people actually do what they know. Knowledge is not good enough. Taking action with that knowledge. And as I say down at the bottom, you've heard me say today, you can't be half pregnant. You can't give trading a go. Either you're going to do it or you're not. Okay? Either you're going to succeed or you're not. I know that every one of you in this room can achieve whatever your goals are as traders. I know you might not know it yet. You might need to go through some learning experiences to master the setups and develop the discipline, etc. but I know you can do it. So what strategies do you need to implement? And that's where it comes into people like Mark Douglas and also the one thing. So what's that got to do with our head stuff? Everything. You need to study that book traders, the Discipline Trader. You need to go onto YouTube and of course on the website, you can download those, uh, the, the videos are on my uh, Google Drive, but you can also see the, exactly the same videos on YouTube for various um, sessions that Mark Douglas did. For example, there's four different sessions I think he did over a number of days. Now, some of it, when you first listen to session one, may not be relevant to you because he's talking about stock traders, stock traders. But there are still some important things he brings up. Just remember that one thing that he brings up. Now, what's that one thing? The one thing, if you're finding trading difficult, is to become an expert at one particular type of behaviour pattern that repeats itself with some degree of frequency, such as the two Bs. 
To become an expert, simply choose one simple trading system that identifies a pattern, preferably one as mechanic instead of mathematical, so you'll be working with a visual representation of the market. So what you want to do there, traders, is to really study Mark Douglas's material, or maybe Van Tharp or any of the others. But initially, make it your trading Bible. It's very, very important that you do that. Now, in the folder, there's a ton of other material. For an example, I've got there the Biology of Belief, a summary, which I found on the internet that just may be interesting to you before you go and invest in the book. Don't buy the book if you have a fixed mindset. You need to be open-minded to the possibilities of what he teaches. There's some articles there on deliberate practice, such as when we have deliberate practice, we apply ourselves to backtesting our strategies, that we ask the right questions. And once again, you should get very tired when you're doing deliberate practice. Why? Because you're concentrating, you're trying to learn. What's not perfect? How can I improve my entry? Or how can I improve the entry? How can I improve the exit, etc.? So I want you to go through all of the handouts. So traders, what we've done the last hour and 25 minutes is to go through a ton of material. As I said, some of these subjects on NLP and some of the other things we could spend hours and hours doing. But we, you don't have that luxury. So you need to start to implement some of these things yourself. So we will finish. So hopefully um, uh, we, you take massive action towards your 500,000 a year plan of action with a trading plan, um, going through your swish patterns, etc. So traders, we'll wrap up there. Thank you very much. Certainly hope you picked up a few ideas. And of course, um, uh, for those that are watching my video, let me do a, be selfish and do a little uh, plug. Visit my website, become a member. And if you saw the comments here, you'd see some great ones there. Um, <laughs> Maria, um, my list of trading tasks has become much, much longer. And just remember traders, with that point there, with the list, chunk it down, Maria, where you don't suffer from, from the overwhelm. What's that one thing that you need to focus on initially? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Likewise, with some of the things that we need to do so we don't get overwhelmed, master one. Because when you do master, like what's the number one thing? What can actually happen? You have what we call the dynamo effect or the ripple effect. You get that one thing out the way and it starts to flow through a whole lot of other things. So thank you very much, uh, traders. Uh, thanks, Jan. Paul, we'll, uh, you're welcome. We'll see you all uh, in the coaching tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Oh, and as I mentioned also, um, uh, the link will be uploaded later today if anyone wants to watch it again. Thanks.